Hey guys, real quick before we start the video, uh, my microphone's doing this super cool popping thing in my recordings. I don't know why, it's kind of annoying if you hear that, it's not your computer, it's me. I don't have time to troubleshoot, I'm figuring it out, sorry about that. Well, Season 16's seasonal artifact has no mods like Breach and Clear or Particle Deconstruction in it, and you know what? I'm pretty happy about that. This season focuses very heavily on Glaive mods and mods for Void subclasses, who would have seen that coming? But THE mod, or at least one of THE mods of the season, is considered to be Volatile Flow. Volatile Flow makes your Void weapons shoot volatile rounds for about 17 seconds after picking up a Void Elemental Well. What does that even mean? I will explain. If you're already familiar with a lot of the terminology that I'm about to go over, feel free to skip ahead, use the chapter markers. But otherwise, I'm gonna go over volatile, void elemental wells, how to generate wells, and then we'll dive into aspects, fragments, exotics, and other guns that I think you should look into. I'm not gonna have any de facto builds in this video, like here's exactly what to do and what mods to put into every single thing, because we would just be here forever. There's a whole lot to talk about. That's something maybe for the future but I will be providing an outline so that you can pick and choose some of the things that I recommend in this video and start experimenting for yourself because there are a lot of potential builds. Volatile is one of many effects in the Void subclasses like Overshield, Devour, Invisibility, stuff like that. Volatile is where you can debuff an enemy and cause them to explode after a certain amount of damage is dealt to that target or if they die. So Volatile Flow, making your Void weapons shoot Volatile rounds, means you will debuff enemies with Volatile after you hit them with your gun. But we have this activating qualifier after picking up a Void Elemental Well. What is that? Elemental Wells are a relatively new mod experience getting bolstered in Season 15 with a new suite of mods. I have a video covering everything that was released very recently. Note that we are also waiting on a few more fragments to unlock after the raid launches, one of which is Echo of Instability, where getting a Void Grenade kill will trigger volatile rounds for your Void weapons. We are going to talk about Echo of Instability in this video as a part of some theory crafting, but when this mod is fully released, if another video is warranted, I will make another one. So, we need to generate Void Elemental Wells to make our volatile rounds happen, or we need to rely on other people, but we don't want to do that. So how do we make our own? We need an Elemental Well Generator mod. There are a few of these in the game, but if you don't have them, you're just going to need to go off of what's in the Seasonal Artifact. Unfortunately, there is only one in the Seasonal Artifact, which is Melee Well Maker, making a well when you get a charged melee kill. The well type will be for whatever your subclass is. In this case, we want Void. For Titans and Warlocks, this is good. For Hunters, eh, not so much. That being said, Hunters would likely want to use a different mod for Void Wells anyway, but if you don't have it, well, you're kind of out of luck there. Keep eyes on Ada1 over the coming weeks, visit her every day, and scoop up the mods that she is selling. I think it's probably about time that Bungie makes mods a bit more accessible than just hoping they show up at Ada, but that's another video for another day. Now, before I continue... I do want to clarify that you do not need to be on a Void subclass in order to proc Volatile Flow. You can make Void Elemental Wells without being on a Void subclass, as I will cover. I'm sure there will be situations where you will want to be on another subclass while still proccing Volatile Flow, but in this video I'm focused on the Void subclasses since they have more things that will help facilitate the flow of Volatile Flow. If I need to cover other situations or ideas in the future, I totally will. Let's say you did play last season. What else do we have to make these wells? Well, in terms of neutral mods, we have Elemental Armaments, Elemental Light, Elemental Ordnance, and Shield Crash. Armaments gives you an increasing chance to spawn a well of the element of your weapon after a kill, Light spawns a well when you kill with your super, Ordnance is for a grenade kill, and Shield Crash is for breaking an elemental shield with a matching weapon type, Void on Void for example. We also have Melee Wellmaker here, but the one from the artifact only costs 1 energy as opposed to 4, so just use that one for Season 16. Otherwise, 
all we have to spawn a void elemental well is reaping well maker where after using your class ability your next weapon kill spawns a void well your weapon can be any element it does not need to match the well will always be void there are other mods that make things happen when you pick up a void well but there's only the one in terms of actually making them in the first place the easiest way to go about spawning a void well on demand is by using reaping well maker using your class ability hunters this is incredibly easy for you because your class ability cooldown is likely on a very short cooldown already, provided you have high mobility. You can make it short enough to have near 100% uptime on volatile rounds without a whole lot of effort at all. Titans and Warlocks are going to take a bit more effort to make that happen since their class ability is on a longer cooldown, but they can utilize other mods to give them more opportunities to spawn wells. Hunters can do this too, in case you want to save your class ability for other things. So, Hunters, all you really need is Reaping Wellmaker and Volatile Flow, and you're basically set. That's kind of your core. Titans and Warlocks, you're likely going to want these two, and probably a third, maybe even a fourth mod, to really make sure you're able to proc a Void Well whenever you want. You should mod as your playstyle demands it, or as your content needs demand it. If you find that two mods is good enough for you, then just stick with that. But if you want more, you can always ramp up. Are you really going to need volatile rounds active 100% of the time? No. But it's up to you whether or not you want that option. What about aspects and fragments? Titans, you actually have an aspect that enables volatile from your abilities and from other enemies' volatile explosions, which is pretty nice to just really solidify a complete lockdown of an area with a lot of enemies. However, Comboing Offensive Bulwark and Bastion makes it so you have very high uptime on an overshield provided you are using your class ability very often. The overshield from Bastion procs Offensive Bulwark and your grenade energy regeneration goes through the roof along with making your melee deal more damage and extending the duration of said overshield. So you can opt for Reaping Wellmaker and either Melee Wellmaker or Elemental Ordnance or both to really keep the grenades flowing, which when comboed with Echo of Instability will probably be pretty good. I think either combination of aspects works. It really just depends on your preference. Warlocks, Child of the Old Gods and Feed the Void is going to be the strat unless you want to use Controverse Hold, in which case Chaos Accelerant is obviously the choice. Child of the Old Gods needs your class ability to activate. You're going to be using your Rift a lot as a result. Not only that, but the Void Soul is going to feed you ability energy. Feed the Void will keep you active with constant health restoration and give you grenade energy. Controverse Hold is going to be a really solid play as well with Chaos Accelerant, especially considering all of the synergies that it has this season. It combos with Devour on a kill. Then you get grenade energy from Contra itself on a hit. Then you have overload grenades. Then you can tack on another fragment to weaken targets on grenade hit. There's so much utility in one exotic. Hunters, I think Stylish Executioner is too flavor of the month to pass up. Not to mention that I think having Vanishing Step and Trapper's Ambush is a little redundant. So pick whichever one you prefer. I prefer Vanishing Step. Next, we got Fragments. Now, obviously, if you want to get volatile rounds via grenades, you need Echo of Instability, which will be available soon. Otherwise, you're going to have access to probably two or three more fragment slots, depending on the aspects that you choose. Unfortunately, there aren't really any class ability focused fragments, nothing that gets you energy back on that. There are a lot of melee and grenade energy focused fragments, though. Echo of Provision gives melee energy on grenade hits. Echo of Exchange gives grenade energy on melee kills, and if you only have two more fragment slots, those two are relatively easy calls to make, at least if you're on a Titan or a Warlock. Mostly Titan, though. Hunters? Eh, not as much. Echo of Expulsion seems like a no-brainer thing, but it's also really hard to keep track of the cacophony that is occurring when everything has Volatile on it and everything is just exploding at the same time. Lower end content, I don't think it's really that necessary. Titans, you might want to consider Echo of Persistence if running Offensive Bulwark. It's another 5 seconds on that overshield, which translates into more grenade energy restored as long as that overshield is on you. 
Hunters, you can also consider this one depending on the build you're going for in terms of invisibility. Devour is very good too, Echo of Starvation. Obviously, no more orbs on Masterwork kills anymore. Kind of hurts this. You got a spec for it now. But that's not unreasonable. You know, a couple of kills, you pick up the orb, devour procs. And if you're a killing machine, you can keep that going for quite a while. Echo of Undermining is a nice extra bit of utility in case you have the space for it. Just be aware of that hefty penalty. Echo of Obscurity could be a hunter play as well, but I'm not sure how vital it's going to be to the experience when you already have so much invis potential. How about exotics? Can we do anything here to enhance our builds? Titans, we have some options, but I don't know if we have a clear-cut winner. Doomfane Pauldron just seems like the obvious go-to because it's always been good with shield. Void melee kills giving super energy and then giving you more damage potential while you're in your super but it doesn't really contribute directly to the build. What else? I know what you're thinking. Icefall Mantle, yes! Genius idea, it doesn't work. The shield created from Icefall is not a void over shield when it comes to offensive bulwark. It needs to be void over shield. Specifically, Icefall Mantle gives you shielded. Maybe they'll change this in the future, but as of this video, no deal. No backup plans do work. Gives Void Overshield. Not sure I'm sold on it just yet, though. You're not really using shotguns in super endgame stuff, and it does basically trade your melee for an Overshield, but if you hit three targets with your Shield Throw normally, you get said full Overshield anyway. I'm kind of iffy on it. Plus, it locks you to a shotgun. Helm of Saint-14 provides constant Overshields for a little more adventuring, but you need to be on War of Dawn. And I'd say that's sort of it. For Titans, Severance Enclosure is like, yeah, you could, but it's just kind of redundant. I wasn't really into it. Heart of Inmost Light does work, but I think most people are going to be focused on popping their wall and making good grenade throws. That trying to weave the abilities properly with the buffs from Heart is going to take a lot of the fun out of the experience because you're going to be worried too much about that. If you're capable of doing that, then, you know, feel free, but otherwise I would just stay focused on walls and grenades. Of course, Armamentarium is a fine choice if you just want to stay focused on throwing grenades. Warlocks, good amount of options available for you as it ultimately depends on if you want to focus on Reaping Wellmaker, which is class ability based, or on Echo of Instability, which is grenade based. We have three helms with good prospects, Nezarek Sin, the Stag, and Verity's Brow. Maybe, maybe Felwinter's Helm. I'm not really sold on it just yet though. Nezarek Sin is just a steady flow of ability energy, which is always going to be nice. Combo that with grenade-focused mods like Elemental Ordnance. Been hearing very good things about that. The Stag is strictly for Reaping Wellmaker. Losing your shields gives you 50% of your Rift cooldown back. 50%. You'll be able to Rift as often as a Hunter can dodge if you play this right. And Verity's Brow plays into the grenade aspect of this since you're already meeting the requirements of the exotic because you need those requirements for volatile flow in the first place. Gloves, again, we have Controverse Hold mentioned earlier with all of the mods and the aspects and the fragments that you can mix with those. Nothing Manacles is a bit of a simpler concept. Sanguine Alchemy also seems like an interesting choice, but we want to rift more often, not do a lot of things in our rift once it's down. That's not really the goal. Mantle of Battle Harmony could also work, but it doesn't really contribute anything to the build itself. It just enhances another part of your game, sort of like Doomfangs for Titans. We also have the new boots, Secant Filaments. Those are an option, but I think they're more of a group-based exotic in my eyes versus something to fit this build specifically. Hunters, the thing with y'all is that because your dodge cooldown is on such a short timer, we don't really need to focus on making it even shorter or anything like that. We could do something with Graviton Forfeit, enhancing our invisibility, since we're going to be invisible a pretty large portion of the time, especially if you're using Suppressive Glaive. Worm Husk is also an option. It's a much less interesting one, but it's there as a defensive pick. I'm not crazy about Kepri's Sting here personally. It's possible to make it work. I just don't think you need to really bother this season. Dragon's Shadow just enhances your stats and it gives you a free reload too, so you'll always be ready to proc a Void Well. 
Sixth Coyote gives an extra dodge in case one every 15 seconds or whatever isn't enough for you. Lucky Pants adds on another layer of complexity if you happen to be using maybe the Palindrome as your void weapon of choice. How about this? You ready for this one? Bombardiers doesn't work. I tried it. I tried it. I was really excited about it. Does not work. It appears that suppression effects need to come from your subclass abilities in order to benefit from the mods. Stuff like Bombardiers or any other effects do not work or are unlikely to work with these mods at least as of this video. It's very possible it changes. If it does, I will make a video, but I do have my doubts. Kind of sad about that. You could also just stick with Orpheus Rig, since Quiver is really strong right now. Doesn't really help the build. Guns! How about guns? How about the void guns that we'll be using to proc these volatile rounds in the first place? Funnel Web seems to be the weapon of the month. A lot of people are looking for subsistence frenzy or sub adrenaline junkie. Of course, we have Gnawing Hunger, if you kept one of those, which you should have. Then there's Palindrome. I'm sure plenty of you have farmed for good ones. Graviton Lance off of the 40% exotic damage boost. You got Volatile Explosions. You got Black Hole Explosions. Non-stop explosions there. Le Monarch. Telesto, if it's actually functioning, I suppose. Ruinous Effigy. Wave Splitter. The new Grenade Launcher. Dead Messenger. Throw that thing onto Void for some extra hard-hitting shots. Power Weapons. Maybe someone's going to finally bust out a machine gun in Corrective Measure or Commemoration. Corrective Measure can roll Adrenaline Junkie and Demo. I think that's a great combo. Guess what? Falling guillotine works. That'll proc volatile rounds. Deathbringer? Every ball that rains from the sky is an extra explosion. It's probably only worth using on bosses because I don't think anything else is actually going to survive a full Deathbringer shot. Another thing to consider, maybe, is the perk Osmosis. If your build happens to revolve around throwing a lot of grenades, with Echo of Instability. I am not completely sold on the idea just yet. I personally don't think you're really gonna need it. I think there are a lot of good void options to already utilize, but it is there in theory. Other mods to consider are anything that give you any sort of ability energy. Well of Utility to give you more class ability energy is an idea. Distribution, Perpetuation, those are also ideas, but I don't think you really need to get too fancy here. Elemental Time Dilation does not work with Volatile Flow, but Flow already lasts for 17 seconds, so I don't really think you would have needed it anyway. Also, you should really consider Seeking Wells, the mod. This is going to limit the amount of running around you need to do in order to collect those Void Wells. It's better for them to just come directly to you. As you can see, there is so much to experiment with this season with Volatile Flow, and I love it way more than something like Breach or Particle, where it's just a straight-up damage boost, and that's your whole build. Volatile Flow and all the suppression effects can allow for some really neat builds to hit the spotlight, and I will definitely be experimenting with as much as I can over the coming weeks. If I find something in particular that's really, really awesome, I will definitely make a video. Feel free to share your own builds in the comments. If you got something cool, let the people know. Again, this video was just kind of hoping to get you inspired into getting creative and coming up with your own builds. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you next time.